So in previous videos, we learned how these batteries work. These batteries have spontaneous reactions that make one lead high in electric potential, high in positiveness, and it makes the other lead low in electric potential, low in positiveness and more on the negative side. So we essentially create this difference in electric potential, this voltage. So now that we've created this voltage, this difference in electric potential, we know these negatively charged electrons are going to want to flow towards regions of higher electric potential. We know that's energetically favorable. So now that we've created this voltage, we're going to have a current. We're going to create a current. However, what's the magnitude of that current? How can we determine the magnitude of the current that's created? Well, we can determine that using Ohm's law. We know if we have a circuit, we know the voltage of that circuit is equal to the current of that circuit multiplied by the resistance of that circuit. And again, this R represents the total resistance of the circuit. So now we could do this. Now we could use Ohm's law to determine the magnitude of this current. We know the voltage is 12 volts, so we know this circuit has a 12 volt battery, and we know that's equal to the current that's going through the circuit multiplied by the overall resistance of the circuit. And we know we have one 12 ohm resistor, so we know the overall resistance of the circuit is 12 ohms. This is pretty straightforward. So now with the little simple algebra, we could solve for the current, and we would see the current equals one amp. So now we know the magnitude of the current. We know if we have a 12 volt battery and a 12 ohm resistor, we'll have a current of one amps. And again, we simply just use this Ohm's law. So, so pretty straightforward. However, what if we have this example? What do we, we have this circuit where again, we have a, now we have a 20 volt battery. So we create that difference in electric potential. So we're going to have a current. However, we have these two resistors. We have a one ohm resistor and a nine ohm resistor in series. And we know where they're in series because that current is forced to flow through both resistors. So when a current is forced to flow through both resistors where there's no other pathways, then we know the resistors are in series. But now how do we find the current of the circuit? Well, again, we use Ohm's law. So we plug in the voltage of 20 volts, and we know that equals the current times the resistance. However, which resistor do we plug in? Do we plug in the 1 ohm resistance here, or do we plug in the 9 ohm resistor? Well, what do we do? Well, again, remember what, how we use this equation. If we know the voltage source of the circuit, it equals the current multiplied by the total resistance of the circuit. So we wouldn't plug in the 1 ohm resistor or the 9 ohm resistor. We would plug in the total resistance of that circuit. And it's that total resistance that we would plug in. So essentially, the way you normally do this is you would redraw the circuit. You would redraw the circuit, except you would find one resistance that's identical to having a 1 ohm resistor and a 9 ohm resistor in series. So what resistance is identical to having a 1 ohm resistor and a 9 ohm resistor in series? Well, the rule of thumb is you simply just add them. When you have resistors in series, you simply just add them, and that gives you the, the equivalent resistance. So 1 ohm plus 9 ohm equals 10 ohms. So this would be 10 ohms. So now we know these circuits are essentially identical. They're identical. They have the same voltage. And we know a 10 ohm resistor is identical to having a 1 ohm resistor, 9 ohm resistor in series. This gives the exact same amount of resistance as this. They're essentially identical. So now we know the overall resistance of the circuit was 10 ohms. A 1 ohm resistor, 9 ohm resistor in series creates an overall resistance of 10 ohms. So now we know the overall resistance of the circuit. And we have that 1 R value that we need to plug in. Because again, this equation requires that 1 R value, which represents the total resistance. So now we know the total resistance is 10 ohms. So now with some simple algebra, 20 volts equals the current times 10 ohms. So now we would get, we would get a current of 2 amps. So again, th th this is essentially how you use Ohm's law. So now let's do a different example. Let's say we have this circuit. Let's say we have this circuit. So if we have this circuit with the 8 ohm voltage, uh, 8 volts battery, and we have a 3 ohm resistor and 6 ohm resistor in parallel, what's the overall resistance? And again, you know these resistors are in parallel because that, that current is allowed to flow through either resistance. So the current can either flow through this direction or the current could flow through this resistor. So there are these two directions the current can flow through, these two directions in parallel. So that's when you know you have resistance in parallel. So if we have these two resistance resistors in parallel, what's the overall resistance of the circuit? Because we know if we want to find the current, we need to find the voltage, and that would equal the current multiplied by the total resistance of the circuit. So if we have these two resistors in parallel, what is the overall resistance of the circuit? Well, again, we know how we do this. We redraw this, this circuit, well, but we have to find a resistance that's identical to having a 3-ohm resistor and 6-ohm resistor in parallel. 
So what resistance is identical to having these two resistors in parallel? Well, the formula is this. And there are two different ways people like to do this, like to use this formula. So you could either use this formula or this formula. But essentially what you do is if you want to find the overall resistance, the, the equivalent resistance, the overall resistance, you take the resistor. So let's say this is the resistance, the first resistor, and this is the second resistor. So you take the R1, that first resistor, and you multiply by R2, that second resistor, and you divide it by R1 plus R2. So, you, so we would say this is R1 and this is R2, and you would just plug them into this equation. Just plug them in this equation, is, and essentially what you're doing is when you have resistors in parallel, you take the product of those two resistors and divide it by the sum of those two resistors, and that gives you the equivalent resistance. So if you were to do this, if you were to plug in these values, you would essentially get 3 times 6 divided by 3 plus 6. And if you were to solve this, this would give you a resistance of 2. So, so this, this resistance would be 2. So now we know that this resistance is identical to a 2 ohm resistor. So now we know this resistance is identical to a 2 ohm resistor. One 2 ohm resistor is identical to having a 3 ohm resistor and 6 ohm resistor in parallel. These two resistances are identical. And again, we solve that by using this equation. And another equation people use is this one, where you plug in R1 here and plug in R2 here. And again, that equals the equivalence. And you would get, you would see this would equal 2 ohms. So there are these two ways people can do it. But I personally like to use this equation. I think it's a little quicker. But now we know the overall resistance of the circuit. We know the overall resistance of the circuit is 2 ohms. The overall resistance is 2 ohms. So now we know. We know the voltage of the circuit is 8 volts. And we know that equals the current times the total resistance of the circuit. And we know this circuit, these circuits has a, have a total resistance of 2 ohms. So 2 ohms. So now if we were to solve the current, the current would give us obviously 4 amps. So now we know the circuit has a 4 amp current. So again, that's how you use this Ohm's law. And again, if you have a circuit that's not, if you have a simple circuit like this, again, you know, if you know the voltage of the circuit and you know the resist, the total resistance of the circuit, you can find the current. However, if you have an example like this, again, you can still use Ohm's law. However, you have to find the total resistance. And once you find the total resistance of that circuit, it's that total resistance that you plug in. And again, when you have resistors in series, you just simply add them. You add them and that gives you your total resistance. However, if you have an example like this, again, you can still use Ohm's law. However, you have to find the total resistance of the circuit. You have to find the total resistance, and it's the total resistance of the circuit that you plug into this equation. And you have resistors in parallel. You know, we saw that you can use either of these equations to find what these resistors are equivalent to. So now let's do another example that kind of puts these, these, this all together. So let's say we have this circuit. Let's say we have this circuit, and we want to find the current of this circuit. How do we find the current of this circuit? Well, again, Ohm's law. Voltage equals current times resistance. So if you know the voltage of the circuit, and you know the overall resistance of the circuit, you can find the current flowing through. So what's the overall resistance of the circuit? Well, again, we just use our tricks. We just use our tricks. So first what we would do is, is we would leave this guy alone. But we would find what are these two resistors in parallel equivalent to. If we have a 2 ohm resistor and a 3 ohm resistor in parallel, what is it equivalent to? And again, we explained how we do this. We would take R1, so 2, times R2, and divide it by R1 plus R2. And again, if we were to solve this and reduce it, we would get 4 over 3. So we know this resistor is like these two resistance in parallel are identical to having one four thirds ohm resistor. So we know this is equal to this. So now we have this circuit. So now if we have a four third ohm resistor and a three ohm resistor in series, what are these resistors identical to? Well, again, we know how to do this. When you have resistors in series, you simply just add them. When you have resistors in series, it's easy and you simply just add them. So we would add them and we would get an overall, these resistors in series are equivalent to 4.33 ohm resistor. So therefore we know this circuit has an overall resistance of 4.33 ohms. This 4.33 ohms is identical to having these resistors. And again, this 4.33 ohm resistor is identical to having these resistors. And again, these resistors were identical to having these resistors. So now we know the overall resistance of the circuit. So now we know the overall resistance and the voltage. So now we can use Ohm's law. V equals IR. So we know the voltage of the circuit is 10 volts. And that equals the current times the overall resistance of the circuit. Because again, this R represents the total resistance of the circuit. And we know the total resistance is 4.33.
ohms. So now with the little simple algebra, you could solve for the current. Just simply solve for the current, and now you would solve for the current going through this battery. But something, and again, if you were to solve this, the current would give you two, uh, roughly around 2.3 amps. So now we know this battery has a current, I mean, this, this circuit has a current of 2.3 amps. But something important to realize is that amp uh, the, that 2.3 amps are going through both resistors. If we have a 2.33 amp resist uh, current, then we know that current of 2.33 amps is going through both resistors. As that current flows, it flows through this resistor and it flows through this resistor. So so both resistors have a current of 2.33 amps going through them. So therefore, both of these resistors have a current of 2.33 amps going through them. So there's that amount of 2.3 amps going through this resistor and 2.3 amps going through these resistors. But remember that current diverges and it can go through both paths. It can, so essentially that current of 2.3 amps diverges and some of it goes through this resistor and some of it goes through this resistor and then they converge again to have 2.33 amps going going through the rest of the circuit so how much current goes through one resistor versus the other resistor and and what are the voltage drops going through these resistors so i'll talk about that in my next video i have a link of it below